Yeah, this is like our normal start time. Uh, um, so I apologize for the difficulties, everyone. Uh, I'm happy to introduce Nicola bon Bonanomi, who is joining us today from Max Planck in Garching. Um, Nicola has been uh, working with Clemente Angioni and others at uh, IPP for, he tells me, about three years now after finishing his PhD in Milan. Um, and his work has generally focused on using gyrokinetic simulation to study physics of a turbulent transport in tokamaks. And today he's going to talk about his work on uh, studying L-mode edge turbulent transport, which is an important topic for understanding uh, things like uh, isotope scaling, LH transitions, and so forth. So without any further ado, Nicola, I'll turn it over to you. Um, our normal practice is, you know, 50-ish minutes plus or minus. Uh, uh, I'll ask the audience clarifying questions only during the talk, and then we'll have a, an opportunity for Q&A at the end. Okay. So, uh, Nicola, with that, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thank you very much. And thank you for inviting me to this seminar. Can you all uh, see the slides? Yes, it looks fine. Okay. So, as George said, uh, I'm a postdoc at IPP. Uh, I'm focused both <clears throat> experiment and uh, gyrokinetic analysis and uh, in the comparison between uh, experimental results and gyrokinetic results. And this is basically uh, all the work I've done uh, so far at IBP uh, on the on the edge turbulent transport. So this is just uh, to acknowledge some of the people that work with me especially Clement Angioni of IPP that is uh, uh, that I work with uh, and uh, helped a lot uh, in this work and also all the ASDEX upgrade team and the JET team uh, that provide the, the data and helped me to do some of the experiments. I will give some uh, introduction on the uh, basic uh, concept about tokamaks, gyrokinetic, uh, turbulent transport. Then I will give, a, a, I will show the characterization of the Helmut jet turbulence that I obtained uh, using gyrokinetic simulations. I will speak about uh, my study on the uh, effect of the edge normalized gradient on the turbulent transport going uh, from L mode to H mode, so towards the LH transition. Then I'll give uh, just a very quick uh, overview of uh, recent findings uh, in iMode that we started uh, some isotope experiments and study also in iMode. And then I'll give some conclusions. So first of all, uh, we are dealing here with uh, plasmas in tokamak. The main goal is uh, to do fusion, so uh, confine the ethereum and tritium, heat it up uh, enough to start the fusion process. Uh, in a tokamak, we uh, confine the plasma uh, using ma magnetic uh, fields. So this is a very basic scheme of a tokamak with the poloidal uh, uh, plasma field coils that produce the toroidal field. Then we have a primary uh, coil that induce the, the plasma current and they create the, uh, the poloidal magnetic field so that the total, uh, the total magnetic field uh, has a helical uh, shape and the plasma is confined uh, by this uh, uh, magnetic field. The uh, ideal condition for, uh, for a fusion reaction is to reach initiation that is reached above a certain uh, uh, value of this triple product of ion density, ion temperature, and an energy confinement time. And all of these quantities uh, are determined by the transport phenom uh, phenomena in the tokamak. And we know uh, from experimental uh, evidences and also from uh, theoretical expectation that the turbulent transport plays a dominant role uh, for, the for the transport in a tokamak. When here, uh, you can see a typical uh, uh, profile of the ion uh, temperature as a function of, of the normalized radius. 
And uh, what we observe uh, is that uh, uh, above a certain threshold in in power, the confinement in a tokamas is strongly enhanced. So we pass from a low confinement regime, this L mode, this uh, black line here, to an H mode confinement regime. And this is because uh, uh, above this threshold, there's a formation of an edge transfer barrier that uh, lead to the formation of a pedestal in temperature and density. So we have very strong increase of the stored energy uh, of the plasma. This edge transport barrier is very localized. Uh, so uh, it can be a large few hundreds Larmor radius. And uh, uh, we want to understand uh, what are the, the mechanisms that leads to the formation of the of the edge transfer barrier? Because we know that in L mode, the, the edge uh, transport is dominated by turbulence. So there must be some mechanism that suppress the, the, this, this turbulence and allows the transition from, from L to H mode. One possible explanation, uh, it is the main explanation so far, uh, that, Consider nowadays is that the, the, the edge turbulence is suppressed by a strong uh, shear in the cross B velocity associated with the edge radioelectric field. Uh, so here, here you can see again uh, the ion temperature profile as a function of the normalized radius. And if you look at the radioelectric field in this uh, region of the pedestal region, so between 0 0.95 and 1 in a poloidal. Uh, we can see that there's a strong evolution from L mode to H mode of the edge radioelectric field. And with uh, this strong evolution, there's a strong evolution of the uh, across B velocity as associated, associated with this uh, radioelectric field and also in the shear of this velocity, velocity that is known uh, that uh, can suppress uh, the turbulence. So the radioelectric field can be driven by uh, the turbulence itself, by the ion orbit losses, plasma profile, plasma rotation. There are a lot of factors that can play a role. Uh, but we know also that uh, the uh, ion radial force balance equation relate the, this radioelectric field uh, to the ion profiles in the edge. So in many cases, this can be approximated by this formula. So the radioelectric field depends on the ion temperature, on the edge uh, ion temperature and density gradients. So what we do in our experiment is to study the evolution of this radioelectric field and the evolution of the profiles, compare uh, uh, the two, and uh, try to understand through a uh, affinity simulation if this is acting uh, as a stabilization for the turbulence. One thing uh, that must be uh, taken into account when considering this H mode, so high confinement regime, is that uh, we have very high pedestal pressure gradients, and this can trigger uh, what, what are called the edge localized mode. And these are strong MHD modes uh, with frequency around uh, uh, 10 hertz, 10, 40 hertz. Uh, that causes the loss of 10, 20% of the plasma stored energy. So there are strong heat fluxes to the tokama components that uh, risk to melt and damages the device. And the strong gas must be avoided in future reactor as the energy release will be uh, too high for the tokama components. And here you can just see a nice picture from the mass tokamak. And you see these filaments. So these elements that then go and hit uh, uh, the wall of the of the token. So we have to uh, to avoid helms, but uh, uh, there are ways to do that. But there are also high confinement and free regime exist. Uh, this would be ideal for a reactor because they have uh, uh, they are high confinement and they are hand free. And in some of these uh, free regimes uh, uh, is the turbulence that limit the pedestal pressure. So turbulence maintain uh, the pedestal pressure below uh, the, the, the threshold that triggers the ends. Uh, and these are just two examples, the high mode. Uh, so here you see uh, for the high mode, uh, the density profile and the ion temperature profiles. 
And you can see that still you have in, uh, in the ion temperature, the L mode profile, the H mode profile, and the I mode profile with the uh, uh, pedestal in temperature. But looking at the density, uh, there's something that uh, calls uh, a still a large transport, uh, particle transport in I mode. So the, the density does not show at the pedestal. And uh, uh, typical of I modes are the development of these uh, uh, weak equilibrium modes. So here is the spectrogram from the density fluctuation measurements, the frequency as a function of the time for a discharge in ASDEX. And you can see that uh, there's this de development on this mode uh, that are believed to be as associated to the characteristic of the edge turbulence uh, in the I mode. Another L3 regime that is very interesting uh, is the ADA H mode that features quasi coherent modes. So here again, the spectrogram of uh, uh, the density fluctuation in time, and you can see the development of this quasi coherent mode. This ADA H mode uh, has pedestal in both temperature and density. But uh, again, turbulence somehow limits uh, the edge uh, pressure and uh, avoid the presence of L. So turbulence is not uh, interesting to study just in L mode or before the LH transition, uh, but also in a, a reactor relevant uh, uh, condition. One very important aspect to consider when uh, speaking about turbulence is the effect of the isotope mass. Uh, for many years, we thought that uh, turbulent transport will scale as the um, following the Jarbon scaling. That is follow uh, this formula here. So increasing the isotope mass uh, of the main ion, we would expect higher turbulent transport. And this was derived by a theory based uh, within an electrostatic collisionless and adiabatic lateral approximation. While experimentally, we uh, see uh, a degradation of confinement with lower hydrogen isotope mass. So something that is opposite to this simple Jarbon scaling. And we know that the edge uh, play a determinant role in this. Here, for example, you can see uh, the LH power threshold, so the threshold above in, in the 18 power above which we enter H mode as a function of density for deuterium. So you can see that it also depends on density, but there's a, almost a factor of two between uh, deuterium and in hydrogen. So in hydrogen, we need the double of the power to, to enter H mode. So it's very important to understand the the hedge turbulent transport, the isotope mass effect on the turbulent transport to achieve uh, stable and free high confinement regimes, and also uh, for a reliable prediction uh, uh, of a plasma in a reactor. How do we study the edge turbulent transport? Through experiment. We study, we did experiment uh, and analyze data from the ASDEX upgrade and the JET tokamak. Here you can see just the, the size of the of these two tokamaks. So as the upgrade that is in Germany, here in Munich, and JET that is in UK, uh, near Oxford. Uh, they are both uh, uh, they have both a metallic wall, and uh, uh, the size is the main difference between the two. So Aztec has a major radius of 1.65 meters, more or less, while JET 2.96 meters. And here you can also compare uh, uh, with ITER, that is the next step for fusion. So we analyze the plasma profiles. Here, for example, the density profile. Uh, from this profile, uh, we can uh, compute the edge logarithmic gradients, which are important quantities uh, because of the drive, the main drive of the linear instabilities and of the turbulence. We can analyze it in particle fluxes. We can uh, analyze the fluctuation in the electron density and temperature, uh, the evolution of the electric field, and then uh, uh, yeah, all these elements. And uh, 
we use gyrokinetic simulation for the, the study. So gyrokinetic are a couple of 5D uh, blasov maxwell equation. So we simulate, uh, we have simulation of the plasma turbulence in a 5D uh, field aligned coordinate system. So we have a radial coordinate X and the normal coordinate, X, coordinate Y, a coordinate parallel to the magnetic field, uh, parallel velocity and magnetic uh, momentum for each particle. This is possible because uh, uh, the turbulence uh, frequency are much lower than the uh, gyro frequencies. So we can uh, uh, gyro average all the quantity uh, on the fast gyro motion of the, of the particle. So we have uh, turbulent frequencies much lower than the gyro uh, frequency. We have uh, uh, Larmo radius much smaller than the uh, variation of the equilibrium quantities. So of the uh, length of the gradients, of the size of the machine. And we have perturbed quantities that are much more compared to the equilibrium ones. So in the edge, uh, we have all these uh, conditions. We can apply gyrokinetic. And uh, one more step that you can do is uh, uh, apply what we called local approximation. So this can be applied uh, if uh, uh, the characteristic lens, especially the, the lens of the, the variation of the gradients are uh, much larger than the Larmor radi radius. Uh, we use this approximation in our simulation in L mode and uh, this is still a good approximation in L mode, but going towards uh, the H mode uh, or in Nyko Feynman regime where we have very, very high uh, gradients in the, in the edge profiles. This approximation uh, might be not so valid, but anyway, I, 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 I think that we can still use the local approximation at least to have uh, some ideas uh, about the edge turbulence. But anyway, in the L mode uh, cases we studied, uh, we found that this is a, still a good approximation. So we do our gyrokinetic analysis using uh, the gene code, but can have uh, using experimental parameters as input. We can use an arbitrary number of kinetic species. Uh, we can have uh, the effect of the plasma rotation or of the uh, cross B shear, electromagnetic effect, collision, realistic geometry. Uh, so we have a lot of physics uh, taken into account uh, and we have many information on the turbulence and also we can compare uh, the, our quantity to the experiment. For example, we can compute the fluxes. We can have the cross phases between the electrostatic potential fluctuation and the electron temperature fluctuation. The spectra uh, in KY, uh, so in the toroidal mode number of the electrostatic potential fluctuation, the growth rate of the linear instabilities, so a lot of uh, information. And finally, uh, one important thing uh, that should be considered when doing this kind of simulation uh, is also uh, that we should develop a reduced model. Uh, for the edge uh, turbulence. Uh, we know for core turbulence, uh, gyrokinetics uh, was, has been used very successfully. And also we are able to uh, produce reduced theory-based models. Uh, and this allows to compute uh, the turbulent fluxes in simulation that are much uh, less demanding than gyro gyrokinetic simulation. So for example, here you have the uh, profiles of these charging Aztecs, the experimental profiles uh, of the X and the lines that are TGLF simulation, that is a quasi-linear code uh, uh, that models the, the turbulent transport. And uh, we can predict uh, uh, the profile of the plasma and the, and the plasma evolution uh, in a few hours, while with gyrokinetic, we will need uh, days to compute just one, one point in time uh, for one discharge. Uh, so in these quasi-linear models, we use just simple linear properties of, of the instabilities and uh, an ad hoc saturation rule developed 
by uh, from nonlinear simulation to compute the nonlinear fluxes. So we are able to do it in the core quite successfully in many cases, not perfect, but quite successfully. But we are still uh, uh, missing a, a theory based model uh, for the edge. So with this in mind, uh, I pass now to uh, the uh, actual study of the L mode edge turbulence. We start from experiments in the, the jet and in the, the ASDEX upgrade tokamak. Uh, what we did uh, was a pairs of uh, shot with uh, matched uh, profiles. So hydrogen and deuterium shots with uh, similar uh, profiles of the electron density, electron temperature and electron ion. And this uh, uh, was obtained uh, playing uh, with the uh, sources of a particle and uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, and with the heating power so in both jet and uh, asdex uh, we needed more gas path and more uh, heating power in hydrogen to obtain uh, uh, the same profile as in deuterium and this is because of the degradation of the confinement uh, with lower reservoir mass but we obtained these uh, these nice shots and uh, we take the experimental data from this edge at the toroidal radius of 0 0.95, so more or less a mid pedestal. Uh, a mid, I mean, these are, these are mod, L modes, so there are, there's no really a pedestal, but more or less here. And we do local gyrokinetic simulation uh, using the experimental parameters as input. Uh, we do pairs of simulation for hydrogen and deuterium using the same parameters and changing only the main ion uh, mass. And uh, we obtain very results, very similar results for JET and ASDEX. So I will show mainly uh, results for ASDEX upgrade. Uh, so this is just, if you're interested to see what kind of simul the, the main parameter in simulation, uh, that is, we use a very high number of, uh, of modes in the simulation, and these are quite heavy simulation. We need half million CPU hour uh, each. So we start from uh, linear results. Um, we focus on the instabilities in this range of, uh, of KY, that is the range where the nonlinear flux is peak. So between 0 0.1 and 0 0.3 in KYROS. Uh, what we find uh, is that the instability are strongly related to the high co edge collisionality. And uh, so we find electrostatic uh, electron drift wave. Uh, here you can see uh, the growth rate of the instability as a function of the collisionality. And you can see that increasing collisionality with stabilize the main instability in the plasma but some point in the experimental uh, range for, for for the edge we see that we have a minimum in growth rate so after this minimum the the, the instability start to be destabilized by collisionality we also repeated this scan using adiabatic passing electron and you can see that the growth rate is lower and uh, we don't see this uh, this effect with adiabatic pass electron. Uh, so there's a strong role of the parallel kinetic electron dynamics for these instabilities. And if we look also to the contribution or to the growth rate, uh, here is plotted in velocity space, so magnetic momentum and parallel velocity. For core like parameters, we find uh, uh, something similar to uh, trapped electron mode. So modes strongly determined by the, the region of uh, trapped particles, that is here. While uh, in the edge at high collisionality, we find that uh, the instability is mainly determined by the uh, region of passing particle. So there are differences between uh, uh, what we find typically in the core and these edge instabilities. 
when if you look at the isotope mass effect, so here again, uh, the growth rate of the linear instabilities as a function of the collisionality for hydrogen and deuterium simulations. And you can see that hydrogen uh, have, uh, has a higher growth rate than in deuterium. And this difference is enhanced at high collisionality. But both uh, have a similar behavior of collisionality. Uh, we see that this instability is strongly uh, related, strongly driven by uh, the electron uh, temperature gradients, so R over LT. And you can see that increasing the isotope mass, we have a shift in the threshold above which this instability uh, uh, is destabilized. And this is not observed uh, if you redo the same simulation at low collisionality. And one interesting thing is that we see that uh, increasing the isotope mass, we have uh, larger uh, structures of the electrostatic potential. Uh, and this is telling us that the parallel dynamic uh, is important for the instabilities and for the uh, effect of the isotope mass. And in fact, uh, if we go to look in the equations, uh, we see that uh, basically the, the strong effect of the isotope mass that we see in our simulation is determined by the, the parallel electrodynamic. And this is because uh, there is a, so this is the linear parallel term in, uh, in the gyrokinetic equation uh, in gene units. Uh, and you see that there is this thermal velocity that multiply all the parallel term. And this de depends on the ratio of the electron mass to the ion mass. Uh, so we did a test. We just introduced the coefficient uh, to multiply all this term in our linear simulation. Uh, but we could adjust in order to have uh, the same thermal velocity only in this, uh, in this term of the equations. Uh, for example, in the Ethereum simulation, we could have the same uh, velocity, thermal velocity than in hydrogen simulation and vice versa. And here you see the growth rate as a function of collisionality as shown before. So you have uh, hydrogen and the deuterium that are the solid uh, points. But when we modify this term in hydrogen simulation to have the same thermal velocity as in deuterium simulation, you see that we reproduce the deuterium growth rate. And the same is valid also for deuterium. If you modify the term to have the hydrogen uh, velocity, thermal velocity, we reproduce the hydrogen growth rate. So in this edge collision and this high collisionality where the, the, the parallel kinetic dynamic is very important and strongly affect the, the instability, uh, we have this strong effect of the isotope mass that is uh, determined by this, uh, uh, by this uh, dynamic of the, of the electron. So it's a different kinetic response of the parallel electron uh, to the instability. And this uh, is very similar to what we found also uh, recently from uh, in our studies uh, from Emily Belli. Uh, now, if you go to nonlinear simulation, uh, here again, uh, this is the, the plot of the growth rate as a function of collisionality. Again, hydrogen uh, higher than, uh, than deuterium. We repeated this scan uh, in growth rate, introducing electromagnetic effect, and we did not observe a very strong uh, effect uh, in, in these cases when introducing electromagnetic effects. But in the nonlinear simulation, uh, we see uh, a very strong nonlinear electromagnetic effect. So we have a strong enhancement of the of the uh, heat fluxes. For example, here these uh, are all. Uh, it fluxes computed at, differ at two different uh, levels of collisionality for deuterium in blue and hydrogen in red. So at low collisionality, you see that the uh, it fluxes follow more or less the gyro bomb scaling, so core-like uh, parameters. But when you introduce the electromagnetic effect, they are strongly enhanced. This is a logarithmic scale. Uh, 
uh, in the edge, in the electrostatic case, that is these two point, you see that already in the electrostatic case, the gyro bomb scaling is, uh, is not followed because hydrogen has higher fluxes. These are normalized fluxes than deuterium. And when introduced electromagnetic effect, we have an enhancement of the, of the fluxes and especially in hydrogen. So these uh, strong linear electromagnetic effects also enhance the, the isotope mass effect. And uh, uh, just when we look uh, more in detail to what is happening, so here again, uh, you have the free fluxes in hydrogen as a function of beta E. So this is the beta, the electron beta. Uh, you see that over a certain threshold, there's a strong enhancement of the, of the fluxes. And this threshold is, uh, this is lower than what we would expect, for example, from linear simulation, where we don't see a strong electromagnetic effect as a, when increased beta E. Up a certain point where we hit uh, the, uh, it's a probably kinetic ballooning modes uh, threshold. But in the linear simulation, we, we observe this uh, at, at the lower threshold. And if we go to look at the cross phases between the electrostatic potential fluctuation and the electron temperature fluctuation at three different level of beta, so these three different points here, we see that uh, uh, the fluxes are determined by mode that go to towards lower values of ky so towards uh, lower total mode numbers and uh, to values of the cross phases closer to pi half so this is telling us that uh, uh, there are larger structures that become important so something more mhd like uh, instabilities has also found in in the past but uh, one important thing uh, is that uh, even though this is a nonlinear electromagnetic effect, uh, all the fluxes here are still determined by the electrostatic potential fluctuation. So these are not magnetic fluxes. When we compared uh, the results of our simulation with the experiment, and uh, uh, We are surprised to see that our simulation can reproduce the experiment quite well. So uh, there's a quantitative agreement between uh, our local gyrokinesis simulation in L mode and the experiment level of the fluxes. So you can see this is the electronic flux in hydrogen on the left and deuterium, the experimental point with uh, large error bars, and uh, the electrostatic simulation with gene, that are these two points, and the electromagnetic simulation. And you can see that we can reproduce the, both the fluxes and the trend with the isotope mass. And this is quite important uh, to validate, uh, for, to consider for the validity of our approximations uh, in these L mode conditions. Okay, we saw uh, the main characteristic of the L mode dash turbulence in L mode. Uh, we now want to uh, study more in detail what, what are the effects of the normalized gradients that are the drive of the, tur of the turbulence uh, going uh, towards the LS transition. So we uh, did some experiment in JET uh, using scan in the NBI eating. So these are natural beam injection uh, in the plasmas. Uh, so we scan in both hydrogen and deuterium and molds uh, with a certain plasma parameters. And uh, we increase the, 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 the input heating power. So we go from 1.2 to 9 megawatt of uh, input heating power. And you can see here the evolution of the electron temperature uh, for this, uh, for the jet cases. So we have a strong evolution of the, of the profiles in the plasma with the heating power. And we did the same with uh, in ASDEX. 
using mainly electron cyclotron resonance heating instead of MBI. And this is because in ASDEX, as soon as we put a bit of MBI heating, we go into H mode. But what we do, what, what we wanted to do is a scan in, in, the, phase, in the L mode phase before the transition. Um, and again, we focus our study in this region here. So we start uh, looking at the evolution of the edge uh, uh, gradients. So electron temperature normalized gradients, ion temperature normalized gradients, and density normalized gradients as a function of the heating power divided by the LH uh, power transition. And uh, it's important to remind that in hydrogen, this LH power transition is almost a double than uh, in deuterium. So we have uh, experiments in deuterium at different uh, uh, densities that are the blue and the black points. And in hydrogen at different density that are the magenta and the red points. And you can see that the uh, electron temperature evolve when we increase it in power. And we have uh, more or less similar values between uh, hydrogen and deuterium. Uh, the ion uh, uh, great normalized gradients evolves too with it in, in, with heating power, but the evolution uh, is much more free in deuterium. So we need much more heating power here to evolve uh, the, the ion profiles in hydrogen uh, with respect to deuterium. And this can have a strong impact uh, on the LH transition, of course. While the densities uh, evolution are, uh, are over and is not observed to, to evolve strongly, we've uh, input it in power and the, there are no high differences between uh, hydrogen and uh, deuterium in these cases. And one thing that is interesting to observe for R over LN, for, so for the density gradient, is that there is no strong evolution even after the, the LH transition. So even when we have a strong pedestal uh, in the density, this parameter is not uh, evolving much. When we go to look at JET, uh, again, the normalized gradients uh, is a function of the input heating power normalized to the LH power threshold. The electron uh, gradients in JET, again, very similar results to ASDEX. There's evolution and not very big differences between hydrogen and deuterium. For the ion temperature gradient, a still a strong evolution. In, the, in this case, with uh, NBI heating, uh, uh, the differences between hydrogen and deuterium are not as uh, strong as, uh, as in ASDEX, even though you have to keep in mind that to reach this level of uh, R over LTI in hydrogen, we, we are using the double of the power uh, that we are using for this. Uh, in deuterium. So again, that there's a strong differences between hydrogen deuterium in the evolution of the of the edge temperature with, uh, with the with the power. And in this case, uh, we see uh, very little evolution of the density gradient in hydrogen. But unfortunately, we cannot in jet we could not go up uh, uh, in power in hydrogen uh, to approach the LH transition. And the Ethereum, we see a small evolution of the density. And now if you compare the evolution of the uh, edge profiles, of the ion edge profiles, and the evolution of the radioelectric field. So as I said before, there's a correlation between the two. Uh, we see that uh, uh, when we increase the uh, net the input heating power, there's a evolution of the radioelectric field minimum. So this is the minimum uh, in the radioelectric field that is usually localized around uh, in the very edge region, around 
toroidal of 0 0.98. And uh, this minimum evolve with it in power, reach a certain a typical value at the LH transition. But it's typical for all the all the discharges study at ALDEX, we, we observe that there is this minus 15 more or less uh, values for the minimum in the corner for the LH transition. So in the Ethereum it evolves, it reaches this, uh, this level, it goes into, L, into H mode and it continue to evolve with input power because the pedestals are uh, evolving a lot. In hydrogen, we, we observe a similar evolution, but we, uh, as we need much more power in hydrogen to obtain the LH transition, we cannot go up in power here. And then if we study the, the correlation between uh, this minimum in the radial electric field and uh, the ion the magnetic term in the ion uh, radial force balance equation, that, are, that is this term here, we can see that uh, there's a strong correlation between the two. So um, the radial electric field is strongly determined, determined by, the, by the ion uh, profiles, uh, especially going uh, to, uh, towards higher power. And if we think that there was no strong evolution in these, uh, in these discharges of this term here, so of the ion density, uh, we can understand that is the ion temperature profile that is playing a very strong role, strong role here in the de determination of, uh, of ER. But of course, um, other player, uh, other, other mechanism, uh, I mean, there, are, there, must, there, there can be other factors that, that, that influence uh, the shape of ER, of course. But the ion temperature gradient is playing a dominant role, we say, in these cases. So we starting from these experimental uh, uh, results, we do gyrokinetic simulation. And what we did basically is a scan in uh, these three parameter, R over LT, R over LTI and R over LN. So the edge normalized gradients in the experimental range of the L mode uh, that we observed before. So before the LH transition. And uh, we keep all the other parameter constant. And uh, as we know that the electromagnetic effect uh, have a strong impact on the simulation, we do both electrostatic and electromagnetic simulation to compare the two. We start with the study of the effect of the uh, density normalized gradient. And uh, so here you can see uh, the ion transport coefficient Ki as a function uh, of R over Ln. We scan three different values of over LN. And as you can see, uh, there's a strong enhancement of the transport coefficient with R over LN. And uh, if you look at the, for example, at the spectra of the electrostatic pot potential and the, at the cross phases between uh, the electrostatic potential and the electron temperature fluctuation, you see that what is determining this strong enhancement is uh, this uh, intermediate KY region. So there's a R over N is a strong drive for uh, the turbulence in this range uh, of KY. So from 0 0.4 to 0 0.8, as you can see also here from the very uh, enhance, strong enhancement of the electrostatic uh, potential fluctuation. Uh, this is in electrostatic simulation. Uh, if we do repeat this in electromagnetic simulation, um, we still see an enhancement of the transport coefficient, but we don't see a strong effect of R over, R over Ln on the, on the low KY uh, turbulence that is destabilized by the electromagnetic effect. And uh, if we consider in the simulation the uh, across B shear, that can act uh, as a suppression of the turbulence. Uh, and we scan uh, in this parameter, in, uh, in this gamma cross B, so in the cross B shear, simply considering the, the, the effect of the variation of the normalized uh, density gradient in this formula. So it's a, bit, it's a simple approximation for now. We see that 
increasing the A cross B shear with increasing R over N does not uh, affect much uh, the result. So there's a suppression of the turbulence, but uh, the turbulence levels increase a lot with R over N. If we now look at the effect of, of the electron temperature normalized gradient, uh, we see something that was a bit surprising because R over LT is the linear drive of these uh, instabilities uh, that we found. Uh, so these drift wave instabilities. But when we look at the transport coefficient, so here I reported both the electron heat coefficient, the ion and the particle as a function of R over LT, you see that increasing R over LT doesn't um, result in an in enhancement of the transport coefficient. And there is even a, redu a reduction of the transport coefficient. And uh, if, you, if you look at the structure of the spectra of the electrostatic potential fluctuation and the cross phases, uh, we see that there's no a strong effect of the R over LT on the electrostatic potential fluctuation, while uh, uh, we have uh, uh, the drive of this drift wave uh, turbulence at low Ky, but this increasing R over LT in linear simulation reduce the cross phase between the between uh, phi and, uh, and T, and this reduces uh, the, the the transport level. And then finally, we look at the effect of R over LTI. Uh, in the electrostatic simulation, we don't observe a strong effect of R over LTI, but when we introduce the electromagnetic effect and we have the destabilization of this low KY mode, we see that R over LTI is a strong drive uh, for, for the turbulence, uh, for this turbulence. So here again, you can see the, um, the transport coefficient as a function of R over LTI, and you see that there is a strong enhancement of the turbulent of the, of the fluxes. Uh, you look at the uh, if you look at the spectra of the electrostatic potential and the, of the cross phases, uh, you see that increasing R over LTI in electromagnetic simulation is resulting in a strong enhancement of the fluctuation of the electrostatic potential, a low KY, and uh, we have a strong enhancement of the turbulence here, but is even uh, shifting uh, towards higher values of the, of the cross phases angles, so higher fluxes. But if you if you if we uh, consider the A cross B flow shear in the simulation, we have a very strong uh, uh, suppression of this low KY turbulence this time. So when we increase the uh, A cross B shear with increasing R over LTI, we uh, and we consider this effort in, in the simulation, we end up having a more or less constant and much lower. Uh, values of the transport coefficient. And this uh, is also what we observe more or less in the experiment. So these are the ion transport coefficient uh, as a function of the heating power for the Aztec subgrade cases. In deuterium, in blue, and in hydrogen, in, uh, in black. These are again the simulation I showed before. So these three points corresponds to these three points here in red. And you can see that uh, increasing uh, uh, the gradient, it, the, the ionic flux increases, and also the transport coefficient increases. When we consider the uh, external flow shear, we end up here. So as, as in, in the experiment, we have an increase of the, of the heat fluxes. Uh, but uh, not an increase of the of, of the turbulence of the transport coefficient. And this is again another uh, very interesting and prom promising result to understand what is going on and the relationship between uh, the evolution of the profiles and the and the VH transition. Okay, this was uh, what was obtained from nonlinear simulation. So now I'll just give a very brief consideration 
on the possibility of uh, uh, construct uh, reduced models or quasi-linear models for the ash turbulence. Uh, so what we observe non-linearly when increase air over land, for example, is a strong enhancement of the fluxes. But if you look at the linear growth rate here as a function uh, of KY at different levels of air over land, you see that when we increase air over land, we see a stabilization of the turbulence in the region where uh, these fluxes are peaking, so here. So there's an opposite behavior between nonlinear and linear simulation. And we, if we look also at the characteristic uh, of the instabilities and of the turbulence, we see here, for example, the cross phases between the electrostatic potential and the electron temperature fluctuation. Uh, low air over land, we match more or less between the nonlinear and the linear. So the linear are the uh, white stars. Increasing air over land, we still match here, but we have some mismatch here. And then when we increase even more air over land, we have a mismatch between the linear and nonlinear uh, simulation in the important region here for the fluxes. And if you look also at other uh, properties like the characteristic frequencies of the linear uh, instabilities that are the blue points with the characteristic, the main frequency of the nonlinear turbulence, we see that there's a deviation between the two. So there might be some problem here uh, for this model. But one thing that we observed uh, in these cases is that if you look at instabilities that are not uh, centered at kx uh, equals zero. So if you, if you look at instabilities not centered at kx equals zero, we can more or less reproduce uh, what we observe in nonlinear simulation. Here, for example, for the case of the high over LN and KY ROS equal to 4, uh, 0 0.4, you have the growth rate and the frequency of the main uh, linear mode as a function of the KX center. And you can see that uh, instability center at KX equals 0 have a, a low growth rate and positive frequencies. While if you move away, we have a peak in the growth rate, much higher, and uh, we can recover. So this is the point. Uh, we can recover the frequency that we observe in the nonlinear simulation. And if you compute the nonlinear, uh, the quasi-linear fluxes from this uh, linear simulation uh, at different KY ROS uh, for this case, we see that increasing KY, we have peaks of the quasi-linear fluxes that are away from this from the kx equal to zero center. So more or less where this growth rate is speaking. So this is, is telling us that there are probably differences between uh, what we observe in the core where the instabilities are uh, centered at kx equal zero. And we can easily uh, construct or re reduce mode models with uh, instabilities centered at, at kx equal zero and what is happening here in the, in the edge but leaves still hope to develop these models. So th there is hope to still uh, reproduce the nonlinear uh, uh, results. Okay, so finally, before the conclusion, I will just show very briefly uh, what we found in the L3 regimes. Uh, we did some experiments in, in iMode. So we studied we started our study, uh, studies in Helmut, but as I said, L3 high confinement regimes are important and turbulence can play a role there. So we started some experiment in ASDEX upgrade, uh, doing uh, uh, hydrogen uh, uh, high mode experiments. And very briefly, uh, these results are still uh, preliminary. Uh, so we observe differences between uh, deuterium and hydrogen. We have an higher power threshold to enter high mode in hydrogen uh, than in deuterium. And we observe a much lower improvement in confinement in hydrogen plasmas with respect to deuterium. And a very interesting thing uh, regards the weak equilibrium modes. Uh, so these are, uh, uh, again, uh, um, the spectrogram of the uh, fluctuation in the electron temperature as a function of the frequency. 
in the Ethereum and Hydrogen I modes. And you can see in the Ethereum, there's a strong development of this ubiquitous mode, a strong reduction of the fluctuation at lower frequency. And these weekly query mode are uh, uh, localized at the very, very edge. So close to the separatrix, close to ropoidal uh, equal one. So usually have ropoidal equal 0 0.99. While in hydrogen, we have a, a lower uh, evolution of the weekly query mode. We don't observe a very strong reduction of the, we don't observe a reduction of the low frequencies uh, fluctuation. And uh, these modes are localized more uh, inside. So Ropola does 0 0.96, 0 0.98. So there are differences between the two. And this can help to understand uh, uh, what we are observing here, uh, also comparing with uh, simulation results. Uh, OK, so this is uh, all. I can go to the conclusions. So we characterized the DL mode uh, edge, or at least we uh, we could characterize the DL mode edge turbulence with our local gyrokinetic kinetic simulations. Uh, we found a result very similar to past studies done by Bruce Scott in this paper, in these very nice papers. Uh, our gyrokinetic simulation can reproduce the experimental fluxes and the trends of the isotope mass for both JET and ASDEX are great. And uh, we uh, now understand that the collisions and the parallel electrodynamic are fundamental aspect for the turbulence in the edge. And there is a strong role of the parallel electrodynamic that determines the strong role of the isotope mass uh, that is causing the degradation and confinement observed between hydrogen and deuterium. And we also see that there's a strong nonlinear electromagnetic effect that enhances locate turbulence and transport in, uh, in our simulation. And these also have an impact on the, on the effect of the isotope mass. Regarding the edge normalized gradients effect, we done experiment in ASDEX upgrade and jet eater like wall. We see different evolution of the different edge normalized gradients toward the late transition while the ion uh, temperature gradients evolve with input power, the density evolve uh, less. Uh, we observe generally uh, values of air over LTI that are lower in hydrogen with respect to deuterium at same input power. And we see in our cases a stronger uh, correlation between the right electric field at the ion temperature profiles. Then uh, if we do the gyrokinetic simulation analyzing the effect of these uh, edge normalized gradients, we, we see that there are uh, very different effects of these gradients on the turbulence at different wave number. Uh, we see that the experimental external flow shear uh, is able to stabilize the turbulence in our simulation. And uh, if we increase this external flow shear with increasing error over LTI, uh, we strongly suppress the turbulence and we can reproduce what we observe uh, in, the, in the experiment. And uh, yeah, again, and the transport coefficient that we found from our simulation are in quanti quantitative agreement with the experiment. It is an important point for the, the validation of this uh, local gyrokinetic approximation. And regarding quasi-linear models, uh, there's a possible role of in KX instabilities uh, for the final level of the turbulence that is uh, different from what is usually observed in the core. And this is 